Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We're having a bit of a change because we're having a puffin book. Um, and this is Gervais Finn, the day our teacher went batty. Nativity play. Oh miss, I don't want to be Joseph. Miss, I really don't want to be him. With a cloak of bright red and a towel on my head and a cotton wool beard on my chin. Oh, miss, please don't make me a shepherd. I just won't be able to sleep. I'll go weak at the knees, and wool makes me sneeze. And I really am frightened of sheep. Oh, miss, I just can't be the landlord, who says there's no room in the inn. I'll get in a fright when it comes to night, and I know that I'll let Mary in. Oh, miss, you're not serious. An angel. Can't Peter take that part instead? I'll look such a clown in a white silky gown and a halo stuck upon my head. Oh, miss, I'm not being a camel or cow or an ox or an ass. I'll look quite absurd and I won't say a word and all of the audience will laugh. Oh, miss, I'd rather not be a wise man who brings precious gifts from afar. But the part right for me, and I hope he'll agree, in this play... Can I be the star? Question and answer. And where did you go on holiday this year, Richard? Asked the teacher. We went to Mabel Fort, miss, the little boy replied. And did you go on a donkey? Asked the teacher. Oh no, miss, the little boy replied. On a bus. I think that was quite obvious. Exam. An angry sun glared through the high window. The hall was stifling and stuffy. And we were wet with sweat and breathless, sweltering in our seats, sizzling, wilting in the heat. Glued to the paper with sticky hands, all was quiet, all was still. Save for the teacher's gentle snoring, he had fallen asleep at his desk. Truth will tell. A small child was splashing poster paint on a great grey piece of paper. Do you paint a picture every week? asked the school inspector. The small child shook his head. Hardly ever as a rule, but Miss said, we've got to paint today. There's an important visitor in school. <laughs> That's typical when inspector comes. Infant nativity. He looked like a little angel, with his round eyes as blue as the sky, and an innocent, childlike expression. He peered through the curtains at the assembled parents, dressed in his white silk costume, trimmed with silver, and waited for his entrance. He turned to his friend and whispered, If Miss thinks I'm being a flipping snowflake next year, She's got another thing coming. <laughs> Dinner time. The important visitor smiled widely. The infant munched and crunched his biscuit and stared with wide, unblinking eyes. The important visitor, visit, oh, but I can speak. visitor said, My little boy demolishes food like a dinosaur too. The infant replied between bites, he eats raw meat then, don't he? <laughs> That's because of well, no, dinosaurs do. Parents like you to watch your manners, be polite, tidy your room, switch off the light, wash the dishes, polish your shoes, brush your teeth, watch your P's and Q's, kiss your auntie, never swear, eat your greens, Comb your hair, do your homework, go to sleep, set the table and wipe your feet, flush the toilet, sweep the path, change your socks, have a bath, sit up smartly, stand up straight, blow your nose, clean your plate, hang your coat up, close the door, say please and thank you, be in by four, and generally behave as they think 
they did when they were our age. <laughs> That's very true. Less able. He could not describe the beauty that surrounded him. The soft green dale and craggy hills. He could not spell the names of those mysterious places which he knew so well. But he could snare a rabbit and ride a horse, repair a fence and dig a dike, drive a tractor, plough a field, milk a cow and lamb a new. Name a bird with a faded feather, smell the seasons and predict the weather that less able child could. Clear English. Mr Smart, our English teacher, stood at the board one day. He turned and said, put pencils down and kindly look this way. Before you have the school next week and in the world a job you seek, remember that an interview, be clear in what you say. I put some notes upon the board, but firstly, want to say a word. Now, you will not achieve success if hair and clothes are in a mess and if you wear a grubby shirt and your old shoes are caked in dirt, the outcome of the interview, I am sure you can guess. Well, this applies to English too. They'll think you haven't got a clue. If over words you stop and stumble, whisper, wince, mouth and mumble, Become confused and start to stutter. Stare at the floor and mealy mutter. They certainly won't pick you. So always choose your words with care. Speak clearly or you'll ruin it. Now everyone, look at the blackboard please. And then I will go through it. Last in the queue. When they gave out the instruments at school. I was the last in the queue. There were trumpets and trombones, French horns and flutes, violins and violas, clarinets and cornets, guitars and saxophones, and even bass cones, tubas and cellos, drums and piccolos, and even oboes. There was only the double bass left for me, and the trouble is, I'm only four foot three. A proper poet. Today we have a real life poet in school. This gentleman, who's standing next to me, I must say when I met him in the entrance, he was not as I imagined he would be. I'd always thought that poets were tall and one. With eyes dark, as deep as any sea. So when I saw the jolly little man, he didn't seem a proper poet to me. The poets I've seen in pictures dress in black, with velvet breeches buttoned at the knee. So when I saw the t-shirt and the jeans, he didn't look a proper poet to me. I've read the famous poets are often ill and the consumative deaths on a tea. Well, I've never seen a healthier looking man. He just didn't look like a proper poet to me. My favourite poems are Tennyson and Keats. The modern stuff is not my cup of tea. So when I heard our poet was keen on rap, he didn't sound a proper poet to me. Well, I'm certain that will all enjoy his poems and listen. After all, we paid his fee. I hope that they're in verse and they rhyme, for that is a proper poet to me. Uncle Eric, like some great stooping monster, he emerges from the mine, his red eyes ringed with coal dust and his black hair thick with grime. He pauses by the pit head and the others walk on by. He wipes the sweat from his face of jet and smiles into the sky.
school visitor. Good morning, Mr Manning. Do please take a chair. A cup of tea is on its way. Are you comfortable there? I must say that your letter caught me unprepared. The children are so nervous and the staff, quite frankly, scared. Now, I think you'll find the pupils here really try their best. Their reading's good, the writing's neat. Feel free to give a test. I know this is a little school, but we do strive for perfection. I must say that we've never had a thorough school inspection. Oh, you're not the school inspector? And Manning's not your name? You came out of the toilets and you block the caretaker's drain. <laughs> That's a weird one, isn't it? <laughs> That's very odd. Sister says, When Richard clambered up the tree and fell to earth and grazed his knee, sprained his ankle, scraped his chin, cracked his elbow, cut his chin, his sister said, as she stood by, I didn't know that boys could fly. On winter's day, when on his sledge, Matthew hit a hawthorn edge, scratched his face, bruised his hip, thumped his nose and split his lip. His sister said, I didn't know that boys like rolling in the snow. When Dominic, on his roller skates, collided with the garden gates, Blacked his eye, banged his head, stubbed his toe and broke his leg. His sister was heard to announce, I didn't know that boys could bounce. Interesting. The teacher. The teacher, it is sad but true, likes telling children what to do. At college, he is taught to shout and... Learns to order kids about. With nerves of steel and fists of iron. He strides the classroom like a lion. Then freezes with an icy stare. And throws his hands up in the air. Shakes his head. And does deep despair. The teacher. It is fair to say. Likes giving orders every day. She can't speak quietly at all. But has a shriek and a scream and a bawl. Bellow back and screech and huff, hollow wail and pant and puff, lament, complain, sigh and drone, yell and yelp and roar and moan, grimace, grunt, growl and even groan. The teacher, yes, I hear you sigh, does not use words like you and I. In raining fall, tough profession. He learns each teacher likes expression. Stop fiddling boy and pay attention or you will join me in detention. I really don't know why I bother. In one ear and out the other. I'm waiting class. My, my you're slow. I'm not here for my health you know. Now settle down and look this way and you go put that thing away. Take out your books. What did I just say? As soon as teachers enter college, they cram their minds with all this knowledge. Then they emerge completely changed. It's very odd. It's very strange. And that is why it's sad but true that teachers aren't like me and you. The Little Philosopher Your writing's so untidy, Matthew heard his teacher moan. I know, miss, said the pupil. This pen has a life of its own. Bonfire Night Blues Remember, remember the 5th of November. Gunpowder treason and plot. Well, after last week's washout, I would rather not. My Roman candles bluttered and refused to light the sky. My sparkles wouldn't sparkle, and my rockets wouldn't fly. My bangers, they just would not bang, and 
my golden rain went foot. My whiz bang blew out clouds of smoke that covered me in soot. My thunder flash just fizzed a bit. My conkers wouldn't light, and it does say conkers. My silver fountain whimpered, it was such a sorely sight. My jumping jack declined to jump, and my Catherine wheeled to turn. Not a single flipping firework worked, then the bonfire wouldn't burn. I was feeling really cold and wet, but when I began to groan, my dad got really angry, and he told me not to moan. He said I was like a big damp squib, and it does say squib, not squid, it's S-Q-U-I-B, just to be clear. And then he sent me home, so I don't want to remember bonfire night this year at all. The Lucky Horseshoe Dad found a rusty horseshoe in the garage on the floor. He said that it would bring us luck if placed above the door. So we climbed high up on the ladder to nail the horseshoe in, but dropped the heavy hammer, which cracked him on the chin. It clattered towards the ground, but when it reached the floor, it bounced back like a boomerang and smacked him on the jaw. Down it went a second time, rebounding off his shin. Then bounced back up and once again it cracked him on the chin. Down came the nail and iron shoe, rebounding off his head. Then Dad fell off the ladder and bruised his arm and leg. Such was his fate, he lay prostrate. I thought that he was dead. Then came a moan, then came a groan. What rotten look, he said. <laughs> it's a bit bad look that, isn't it, for an ocean. Out fishing. A heron, needle-beaked, bright-eyed, barrel-chested, silver-feathered. Stands in the river. Spiking fish, then swallowing them whole effortlessly. A boy sits on the bank, holding his rod above the weedy water, watching the float, waiting for a bite, patiently. And that's just called out fishing. Then we have, um, this one's called the parents, well it says a parent's prayer, but it was called the parent's prayer and it was changed. Always believe in yourself. Promise always to be compassionate. Appreciate that you'll make mistakes. Recognise that I do too. And trust me with your worries. Never doubt that I will support you when you need me. Talk to me about things you find difficult. Share your dreams. Please understand that I have moods just like you. Receive a little advice now and again. Except that I sometimes get things wrong. You need to help me get things right. Enjoying your life. Realise that I love you without reservations. I think that's kind of sweet. Rhyme time. Our teacher, Miss Paradin. To reach us children, she decided to teach us rhyme. And asked us to all take our name, find a word that sounded the same. So we did. Andy is dandy. Booper is super. Kitty is pretty. And Claire is fair. Mabel is able. Scott is hot. Luke is cute. But Tomato is cuter. Dwight is bright. Trevor is clever, Terry is merry, and Jim is slim. Brenda is tender, Cecile is special. Dean is keen, but Rowena is keenest. Liz is a whiz, Danny is canny, Pip is hip, and Jill is brill. Holly is jolly, Grace is ace, Pete is sweet, but Nita is sweeter. Kate is great. Mick is quick, Nancy is fancy, and Paul is tall. Sally is pally, Wendy is trendy, Dave is brave, 
but Fraser is Pereva. The trouble is, my name is Matt, and I can't think of a rhyme for that. Well, not a nice one, anyway. Page Boy At my sister's wedding, I was a page boy dressed in blue, with little velvet trousers and a buckle on each shoe. I had to wear white stockings and a massive pink bow tie and a really silly frilly shirt. I thought that I would die. With everybody watching, I shuffled down the aisle with a silver horseshoe in my hands and a really stupid smile. You do look very handsome, my dirty mother said. I looked at her and then replied, I wish that I was dead. Well, I think you look nice and very, very cute. In your pink bow tie and buckle shoes and your little page boy suit. Well, thank you very much, I said, glaring at my mother. But I am 21 years old and my sister's elder brother. (laughs) The parents' warning. If you clamber on that frame and hang your head just once again, don't say, I didn't warn you. If you tumble from that tree, scrape your elbow, graze your knee. Don't say, I never told you. If you stumble on that ledge and fall and break both your legs, don't come running to me. (laughs) Signs of the times. I sometimes stop and stand and stare in silent incredulity at signs and labels everywhere which show man's blind stupidity. In a newspaper, man battered in fish shop on a can of paint for indoor and outdoor use only. By a motorway, attention, all cat eyes have been removed. On an hairdryer, do not use while sleep, while sleeping. In a shop, bag in basement upstairs. On a packet of peanuts, warning, this product contains nuts. (laughs) <laughs> That's true. That. At a station, beware of moving trains. This is so true. Think about it. At the fair, ears pierced while you wait. On a bottle of sleeping pills, warning may cause drowsiness. In a supermarket, our staff are here to serve you. On an examination paper, the option is compulsory. In a gym. If you cannot read these instructions, ask for help. On a child's toy, please note, this gun does not fire real bullets. In a public toilet, wet floor. This is not an instruction. (laughs) Well, that's really interesting and we're sort of halfway through now. So I'm going to leave the other half for a different time. But I like these books. I enjoy reading them. Um, I know that they're not particularly overly funny or anything, but I just like the way that they're presented and the different points that's in them and how you can relate. I think that's kind of nice. And there is some sweet things in as well. So, Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. We'll continue next time. And many blessings. <laughs>